-hmm. Okay. All right. So here we are in a Google Chrome browser. We're just going to go over uh, to the top. We're going to type in www.uvisit.com. All right. You visit. Now, if you see this page, then you know you're in the right place. Um, there's three different tabs up here, but uh, first one says students and parents. That's where you're going to click to get started when you explore you visit on your own. Real quick, let me say this. Um, if you are impressed by this tool, you should absolutely sit down with your parent if you have the time and internet access at home. Uh, sit down with a parent and show them how cool this tool is. Get the conversation going about college with your parent. Uh, they may have questions for you. They may uh, that you know you bring to me or you bring to Miss Baker, or you bring to your teachers. Uh, so uh, yeah, definitely a good idea to sit down with your parents and uh, check out uvisit.com. So we're like I said, we're going to start here with students and parents. And the page is loading. And as you can see, uh, I'm just going to show you this splash page. These are probably some colleges that you have never heard of. And that's OK. A lot of times these these colleges don't have big sports teams, <laughs> and that's a lot of times where students hear of colleges. Um, and this isn't the whole list. This is just like some of them that they're promoting. Um, so yeah. We could click on any one of these and start on a uh, virtual tour. Uh, we are not going to do that right now. Uh, like I said, we're just going to go to. Um, to the search bar and I'm going to type in Tennessee State University. And click search. And there it is, it pops right up. Um, so if we scroll over the picture before I click 360 experience, which is how we'll start the tour, I'm going to point a couple things out. Um, whenever you find a school, whenever you hover over it, it's going to tell you the city or the location of the school. It's going to tell you if it's a public school or a private school. It's going to say two year, four year, or it might say trade if it's a trade school. Um, it's going to tell you approximately the number of students enrolled there, and it's going to give you tuition. You'll see two prices here. Tuition, as many of you may know, is sort of a fancy word for the price of uh, education at your college. That's not that doesn't include being able to live on campus and eat on campus, or it doesn't count your books, some of the other fees, but just for education. Um, the first number here says $5,208. Um, that first number is always going to be the in-state rate. OK, so if you go to a public school uh, in state, uh, then uh, or if you go to TSU, then that's about how much you would a uh, pay to go there. If you came from another state, I grew up in Kentucky, so let's take Kentucky for example. Um, if I was applying to TSU, I would have to pay this other price. That's the out of state rate. So that's quite a bit more, right? That's more than, th that's about three times more than the in state rate. Uh, I'm not gonna get in the weeds to explain why, uh, the the price is so different but i just want you to know that as you are looking specifically for public schools out of state a lot of times the tuition costs more just because you're from out of state does that make sense i'm going to pop my head over real quick just glance over at the at the chat um we've got some good questions coming in i'm going to publish some of these miss baker if you don't mind trey asks have we heard of fisk we love fisk university that's one of my favorite hbcus if you don't know what hbcu means i want you to write that down so you can google it that's right i'm giving you some homework here <laughs> elmer asks is there food there oh yeah there's food at tsu we're going to see the, the cafeteria on this tour um so um with that said um, let's go ahead and click the 360 view. What's going to happen when I push play? We're going to start in the student center at TSU and a person is going to walk out on the screen and talk about uh, TSU and the camera is going to kind of like rotate around. It's going to be cool. Um, so, oh, actually, now that I think about it, there's an introductory video first and then that happens. So let's go ahead and click 360 view. 
fingers crossed you guys can hear it. Um, and Miss Baker, feel free to unmute your speakers if you just want to test it out for a minute and let me know. Because um, we are on about a 30 second delay with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and push play. Welcome to Tennessee State University, one of America's premier universities of higher learning and renowned HBCU. TSU sits in the heart of America's new hit city, the music city, Nashville, Tennessee, home of the Tennessee Titans, the Nashville Predators, and our beautiful 500-acre main campus, which rests on the shores of the Cumberland River. At TSU, Nashville's only public university, we embrace our institution's rich heritage and take pride in our legacy of producing impactful, innovative, and successful alums. Good afternoon, and welcome to TSU TV News. Take a stroll down Greek Road. Explore our impressive architecture and state-of-the-art facilities. Come experience TSU, where our students think, work, and serve. All right. Um, as the hub for all and student activities, starting. <laughs> student support services, and student health services, the Floyd Payne Campus Center is a complete TSU student life experience. The four-story building is home to the financial aid department, admissions, records, as well as student organizations and intramural sports and recreation. Also located in this building is the bookstore, which also provides an online shopping option. In this building, there are several food options, including the cafe, food court, and a convenience store. In honor of our historical AFROTC, this fighter jet adorns our campus center's south entrance, which is also where our distinguished Air Force ROTC Detachment 790 is located. Okay, so as we uh, scroll around, as the hub uh -oh. for all student activities, students I'm gonna turn her off for a second. Um, as we uh, look around this room, we see the tiger over here. He is relaxed, chilling. Um, but there's a couple of interactive things on here uh, that I can click before I go to the next stop. As you can see there's a person standing here, and there's a play button on on her, so that means that's a video. So we're gonna push play on this video in just a second. But what I want to, to, to say, I'm gonna take a timeout and say real quick that I wanna make sure that everybody is paying attention. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna give you guys some trivia questions. So a video will play, and then I'm gonna ask you a, a trivia, true or false question. And I want you to answer in the chat, okay? So uh, in, the, in the question and answer section, just put your answer. So uh, I'm gonna push play. And then um, I'm going to ask you the question and just put true or false, and uh, then we'll go to the next stop. Welcome to Tennessee State University. I am Dr. Glenda Glover, president of this wonderful university. Here at TSU, you get the full campus experience from freshman move-in to commencement day. Our faculty and staff take you under their wings to help you soar. TSU has a rich history of graduating students to be successful global leaders, and I want you to be a part of that legacy, just as I was when I was a student here. So look around you and discover why TSU is for you. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Uh, true or false? Are you ready? True or false? Dr. Glover attended TSU. True or false? Like I said, just put it in the question and answer if you think you know. All right. Um, oh, here's a fun fact that I remember someone telling me. And I actually saw it on the website a few days ago. Do you guys know that Oprah Winfrey went to TSU? How cool is that? So, while we're seeing student support center support services gonna, uh, and student health services, uh, I see this sphere right here. I'm going to click that for another video.
All right, so what we were looking at there is what they call Courtyard Wednesday. They are all about spirit at TSU. Uh, I think that's awesome. Um, and I hope that gets you excited about going there. This uh, That video actually was recorded right outside the space that we just saw. Uh, so pretty awesome. Uh, and by the way, the answer to that question the Floyd was Campus Center is And uh, congrats, Gian, you're the first one to get that right. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next stop on the tour. We're going to go to the library. Oh. Our main library is named the Brown Daniel Library, a vibrant resource center where students study, research, and collaborate on class assignments. Our library is fully staffed and equipped with computers and other electronic media that are very useful throughout the semester and helpful for all students, both graduate and undergraduate, who are conducting research and preparing for classes. The library's hours are generally 7.30 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. During exam weeks, the library is open 24 hours. Okay, there aren't any interactive videos at this stop of the tour, but there's a true or false question. Are you ready? True or false? Generally speaking, the library is always open 24 hours a day. True or false? The library is always open 24 hours a day. I noticed uh, looking at this tour, there's a little back arrow right here. If I click that, it's going to take us outside the building to get a look this is just a photo of the main entrance of the library uh, so if you ever get to visit tsu on your own and hopefully someday i'll get to take you there for an actual tour uh, this is the outside of the building this is what the library looks like okay i can't turn this one because this one's just a photo it reminds me this is just a photo so next up we're going to research and sponsored programs The central building for the award-winning the Tiger Institute is a graduate level research facility for the College of Engineering at Tennessee State University. Its goal is to help faculty, staff, and students conduct research in areas of national STEM workforce needs as advocated by the National Academy of Engineering. TSU's division of research and sponsored programs provides leadership, information, and services that encourage your creative activity. Awesome. Our Centers of Excellence and the annual University-wide Research Symposium offer multiple opportunities for you to pursue the challenging topics and exciting questions that can lead to breakthroughs you'll want to share with colleagues and professionals worldwide. Okay, real quick, um, Treshawn was the first one to get that trivia question right about the library. It's not always open 24 hours. They said it's only open uh, 24 hours during like finals week, but generally the hours are 7.30 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. Um, okay, so as as we can see in this room right here, this is a, a room where uh, this is like a lab. You can see lots of engineering things here. There's one of those bicycles that's motor motorized that I've always wanted. Uh, my birthday's coming up, by the way. Anybody knows somebody? Um, but yeah, this is like a like an engineering lab. It's pretty cool. And what we're gonna see right here is a video between, okay, hold on, time out. I'm gonna stop myself. I'm gonna tell you what's happening here. TSU thinks that you are so excited about seeing TSU that uh, you're ready to stop the tour, go ahead and, and apply. Uh, and if you're a senior, that might be you. <laughs> uh, but for us, that's not the case. So I'm gonna hit the X and that's probably gonna happen again at some point. So uh, just letting you know, that's totally normal. Started to say, this is a video of an instructor uh, working with an engineer, uh, with it's an engineering student. Um, and uh, you might hear some language that uh, is new to you and that's okay. Some of it goes over my head too, but let's just uh, watch how they interact with one another. Okay, Adrian, yesterday we got finished putting together Brewster. He's a robot we're gonna demonstrate on Thursday. All right, but before we demonstrate them, obviously we gotta test them out and make sure he works. Yeah. Let's go through a couple of motions on him and, and uh, cool motions and see if he if he works right. 
Go to the other one. There you go. Right there. All right. He can clean himself out good. Let's go. Let's do another one. Wow. What is that? What, what was that? Sit down. Yeah. There's something wrong here. Yeah, with this back hind motor. Yeah, well, this hind, this motor in the middle right here is a red light, yeah. Correct. So there's a few ways we can probably attack this problem. Uh, one, we maybe we'll change out the wires, um, change out the battery, put it back in, or the even yeah, check out the whole motor. That'd probably be easiest. Yeah. Yeah, that would probably be easiest. I concur. I know a lot about those things. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> Here's the outside look of the research uh, research programs building. OK, next stop is the Avon Williams campus, which is actually not part of the like proper TSU campus. Um, it's separated, but not far. It's actually located downtown. The Avon Williams campus, also referred to as a downtown campus, is positioned in a convenient location. This building is home to the School of Graduate and Professional Studies, which offers a myriad of programs, including professional certificates, master's degrees, doctoral degrees, and distant learning. The Avon Williams campus is also home to the Bloomberg Terminal, which displays financial market data in real time. Students have access to library and media services, student support services, and food and beverage options. Here you will also find our speech and audiology clinic. Yes, student therapists are taking the lead in service to patients. Awesome. So um, yeah, Avon Williams campus has uh, has a lot to offer students. Just giving you a look of like the main lobby area. Um, and before we go to the next stop, I'm going to click play on this person. There might be a true or false question. Pay attention. Hi, my name is Yolanda, and I'm a PhD counseling student at the Graduate School. The Avon Williams campus is a unique part of the TSU system. It is centrally located downtown with access to the highways. The campus provides a shuttle service from the main campus to Avon Williams for students who need services here at the campus. This campus has a library, a computer lab, testing center, and a service for students if they need to have a dining facility also. The Office of Student Support Services provides services for adult learners and distant learners. And although we are separately located, our students, faculty, and staff all remain stable with the model of think, work, and serve. All right, ladies and gentlemen, true or false? The Avon Williams campus has its own library. True or false? The Avon Williams campus has its own library. OK, I'm going to click this back arrow so we get the exterior look of this building. There it is. It's beautiful. I'm sure many of you have driven past this before as you're uh, going downtown. The next stop, we're going to Lawson Hall. Lawson Hall housing the School of Agricultural Sciences includes programs in animal sciences, pre-veterinarian, food processing, and agriculture. Also, here is a University School of Nursing program. Our state-of-the-art 25,000 square foot agricultural biotechnology building stores 12 research labs. The other two facilities, called the Agricultural and STEM Education and Training Center, and the Agricultural Research Support Building are located on the University Farm. This is such a wonderful opportunity. With these facilities, our students will benefit tremendously by engaging in cutting edge research in food safety and security and by expanding their knowledge in their quest for excellence. Awesome. So um, at Lawson, we're looking at this, the inside of like like a science lab. Pretty cool. I see some beakers and stuff. Uh, yeah, here's some on the wall that are drying, recently cleaned. Uh, there is a video here between an instructor and a student, and I'm just going to put this out there. Uh, I, I'm not a science thinker. I, do, I don't have that kind of, <laughs> I don't have that skill. The, these two talk a little bit 
or way beyond my comprehension level. But let's just pay attention to the conversation and try to figure out what they're talking about. <laughs> Today we are going to study molecular level interactions of antibiotic with soil mineral. Uh, you see, this is a real time experiment. We will study in real time how antibiotic can interact with the mineral surface. This is a flow cell attachment, which is inlet outlet going to the reaction bottle. And in reaction bottle, you start with the background electrolyte in the beginning, which gets inlet and outlet, and it's a closed cell. And you keep taking the background spectra, and after about two hour, reaction gets stabilized. Once it gets stabilized, you take the final background spectra and the blank spectra where you should not see any IR band. After that, you add the antibiotic and flow through the system. And with time, when antibiotic get absorbed with the soil, mineral surface, you'll see some signal enhancement or IR beam coming out. From those beam, you can identify what functional groups of antibiotic is interacting with the mineral surface, which is important to find out the mechanism. Do you have any questions? Yeah, my question I have is. Have so many um, questions. Since you are using background electrolyte and you are adding antibiotic, how are you sure that the antibiotic is actually getting absorbed? Sure, so that's a good question. Um, one of the rule of the infrared spectra is when it passes through molecule, it gives you signal based on the bonding of the molecule. So in this case, when you have nothing there you get no IR band enhancement. When you add antibiotic and if that doesn't bind with the surface, then there is no bond creation between the antibiotic and the surface. So you won't see any IR band enhancement. You only see when the antibiotic binds with the mineral surface. All right, very good. Like I said, they're speaking extremely scientifically, very technical, um, and I'm sure that uh, they, they both have had a lot of education and a lot of experience in science to be able to uh, discuss this experiment. So real quick, what we're going to do, uh, take it back to the tour. We're going to click this back arrow as we like to do. Just get the exterior look of the building just so you know that this, I mean, this looks like a pretty brand new building or maybe recently renovated building. Um, and it says agricultural and biotechnology building right across the top. OK, next. Who likes teeth? We're going to go over to Clement Hall and learn about dental hygiene. Clement Hall serves as the main facility for the College of Health Sciences programs. It houses the main office for the Health Sciences College, as well as the labs and classrooms for the specific departments of physical therapy, occupational therapy, and dental hygiene. It is also the location of the dental hygiene clinic, where dental hygiene students actually apply their learning and develop skills. Awesome. I'm going to whip the camera around real quick just so you get the full look of what this classroom is like. That's right. This would this would be like a classroom or a lab um, if you were a dental hygiene student at Tennessee State University. This looks like your typical dentist office. In my experience. Um, everybody loves going to the dentist. Let's watch this video between a professor and a student and perhaps an admissions person laying in the chair. I don't know. We'll see. OK, so today we're going to treat Miss Fortson here as the patient. So because you're the clinician, you want to make sure that you're in the proper clock position as well as your patient is in a proper clock position. So if you're going to clean the facial aspect of sex to number one, what clock position would you be in to clean this person? I would be in position nine. Okay, and because you're working on the maxillary arch, how should the patient's head be tilted up or down? Her head would be tilted up. Excellent. So once you have had the patient in the proper position and you're in the proper position, then you can go into the cleaning. Now, after you finish cleaning the patient, you want to make sure that you're always doing patient education. So you want to have the mirror for the patient to look at because when they're at home, they're going to be looking at the mirror in the bathroom and you're going to have her demonstrate how to brush while looking into that mirror. Then you're going to give the patient pointers on whether they're doing a good job or what they need to improve upon. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Great. 
Yeah, sounds good. Let's click back and get a look at the outside of this building. All right, kind of just looks like a building. <laughs> um, and now we're going to go check out the Performing Arts Center. Very excited to show you this. Our new communication Performing Arts Center features the latest state of the art facilities for music, band, theater, and broadcasting. It holds classrooms and listening labs for all the music programs, as well as piano and instrument studios. It is also the practicing home for the renowned aristocrat of bands and our award-winning choir. All right, so this is like sort of the lobby for the new uh, Performing Arts Center. Of course, we see a little sphere right here. Hope you like music. Extremely powerful. Love that. Love the music. Um, okay. Our new now, communication performing arts. Okay. Now let's just take a step back and see what the outside of the building looks like. Oh my goodness. What does that look like? Oh my gosh. That looks like like a piano, right? Like a keyboard. I'm seeing the white keys and the black keys. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. That has to be intentional. Okay, I don't know. If there's anybody, any teachers on the call that went to TSU and knows if I'm right or not, please, please drop it in the chat. But I see a keyboard. Okay, go on to check out the dorms. Now, real quick, before we uh, do that, when we talk about dorms, that, that word is actually short for dormitory building. Okay, so you may hear, you may hear someone refer to dorms as a dormitory or your dorm room. Uh, a dorm room is basically like a little apartment. Usually you have to share them with, with one other person. It's usually just like two beds, uh, two desks, two chairs, a phone, two closets. Ms. Baker, what else am I missing? That's, that's pretty much a dorm room. Yeah, sometimes a sink, sometimes a shared bathroom, sometimes it's a bathroom that's for everybody on the same floor. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what dorm life is like. If you have a chance when you uh, go to college to live in a dorm, uh, and, you know, if it's if you have financial aid that's going to cover it, especially, I would consider living on campus. It really does change. Uh, the whole college experience for you. Of course, college is getting more and more expensive every year, and sometimes it's more expensive to live on campus than it is to just go to class. Uh, <laughs> so it may not be possible for everybody, but if you have a chance, uh, consider doing what you can to get a living in a dorm paid for. The reason I'm telling you all this is because when we click next on this video, we're actually not gonna see a dorm room. It's kind of disappointing, uh, we're, but we're gonna see the lobby of a dormitory building. We're gonna look at Hale and Rudolph dorms. Uh-oh, I turned the sound off. Let's try it again. Sweet style residence halls, the Honors College residence, Hale and the William Rudolph Center houses all classifications of female students. It also has additional unique features such as a healthier option cafeteria, hair salon, and a laundry room with a cozy waiting area, including a TV, sofas, and see-through windows into the laundry area. All the residence halls provide laundry facilities, lounges, and computer rooms. They also have central heating and air conditioning, jacks to hook up telephones and computers, and cable. All right, it's been a, it's been a minute since I've asked you a true or false question. True or false, this dormitory building has its own cafeteria. True or false, this dormitory building has its own cafeteria. Okay, and while you're putting that in the chat, 
I'm going to shout out the first person that gets it right. So um, better run, run to that chat. While you're doing that, we're going to go check out Holland Hall. Holland Hall is home to the Office of Diversity and International Affairs, which is an inclusive environment for all students and engages the faculty and staff through shared experiences, relationship building, and intercultural development. Our programs are academically and culturally supportive by offering students the program of study they are looking for, an environment suited to fit the needs of all learners. The Office of Diversity in International Affairs provides leadership in advocating and promoting excellence in student services, cultural programming, collaborative partnerships, and international education. Awesome. So if we have any uh, English language learners perhaps on the call, or if we have any students who were born in another country, uh, it, it really seems like TSU has a very dedicated office to supporting students like you and that's what we're learning about here that's what's that's what we have at holland hall so um you know that that that's actually a part of your college planning that uh students that were born in america that um you know have english as their first language they probably don't even have to consider that as part of their uh their planning and you know that's that's a privilege for them but i want you to know that um if that's your experience that you know you're born in another country and that you're still acclimating and getting used to uh, the united states um that you should look for colleges that prove that they're dedicated to serving students like you and believe it or not it's not every college. So I think it's really special that TSU has a building dedicated to students with your uh, experience. Um, real quick, we're going to click the back arrow as we like to do. Just get an outside look of that beautiful building, extremely geometric building. I, li I like the look of that. Looks like it was reno recently renovated or uh, perhaps built. Uh, it's a really nice space. Uh, for this population of students. Did we anybody put anything in the chat for that last question, Ms. Baker? No, oh, you guys are starting to disappoint me, but hey, at least you're still here and you're holding strong. Uh, you know what? For that reason, I'm not even going to tell you what was right. We're just going to go on over to Jackson Hall. Jackson Hall is home to the Aeronautical and Industrial Technology Department. Students are challenged through high-tech simulators as an educational experience. Did you know that Tennessee State University is listed by Aviation Week and Space Technology as one of the top aerospace and aviation schools in the country? Are you interested in a career in industrial robotics, electronic systems, or aviation? Then Jackson Hall will be your new home at TSU. All right, I know a lot of you all are interested in in computers, robotics, all the all the STEM uh, careers. Um, I honestly did not know before we saw this tour that TSU had such a vibrant um, uh, place for students who are interested in going into robotics and engineering and aeronautical. Uh, definitely impressed that it was ranked number one by that uh, magazine, uh, Aviation Week and Space weekly or something like that. Anyway, uh, let's take a step back. Look at the building from the outside. Oh yeah, I know this building. I've been in this building before. It's very nice. Has to be one of the oldest buildings on campus probably. Um, we're going to go ahead and check out the amphitheater. Another feature of our friendly campus is the outdoor amphitheater. A relatively recent addition to the campus, it serves as a site of different types of functions, ranging from outdoor dramatic productions to pep rallies and other kinds of student gatherings, formal and informal. Take a look around. Enjoy the rays of golden sunshine. See yourself enjoying your day while spending quality time with your friends or taking a quiet moment to study at the outdoor amphitheater. OK, guys, I just have to say something really quickly like I love colleges that have plenty of welcoming green spaces. There is nothing like studying for a test under a tree on a nice day, you know, um, or, uh, you know, sipping a coffee between classes on a bench and seeing your friends cross what's called the quad area, right? A lot of times colleges have a quad area. 
Um, that means it's like a green space between four buildings that uh, like face each other in a square. So the green space is called the quad. Um, TSU, I don't know if they have a, they may, I just actually just don't know, have a quad area, but they definitely have this beautiful amphitheater. Right now you can tell that they're using this for a uh, pep rally to, to get to drive a college spirit, but I've been on tours before and there's just students sitting around kind of like they are here, um, you know, just sitting, waiting for classes to start, having their lunch, having a snack, reading a book, uh, watching a video on their phone, something like that. It's just another it's, feature it's of our friendly to, camp um, to have that that sort of green space. Real quick, we're going to click on this sphere and see what's going on at this pep rally. <laughs> Man, I love a pep rally. I love this a, a is the outdoor rally. amphitheater. Um, this is just so awesome. OK, now. Let's see, we're just going to click next. This is the Student Success Center. I'm going to turn the sound back on. The Student Success Center, formerly known as the Learning Resource Center or LRC at TSU, houses many of the student support services to help you succeed at TSU. This includes the Academic Advisement Center, the Honors College, the Media Center, and Reading and Writing Labs. As you can see, this is a beautiful facility with friendly staff members who are dedicated to assisting students to define and attain their educational goals. Take a look, you'll like what you see. Okay, true or false? Easy, easy, easy one. Hope you were listening. There are no student support services at TSU. True or false? There are no student support services at TSU. First one to get it right, I'm shouting you out. Let's go over and check out Shuttle Stop. In order to support students who take classes on our downtown Avon Williams campus, we provide a free Tiger Shuttle service that transports students hourly mornings and evenings, both weekdays and weekends. Awesome. OK, I don't see anybody in the chat. I guess you guys are over my, my trivia. It's OK, it's fine. That was a big old false. That whole clip was about uh, student support services. So anyway, we're just moving right along. I think we've got maybe one more clip, might be two, but we're going to go check out the food, Elmer. TSU Dining Services offers a variety of dining options right here on campus, including Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, Pizza Hut, a sandwich bar and salad bar, the grill and the pod convenience stores on our main campus and Avon Williams campus. Here students enjoy quality multiple options for quality food, coffee, fruit, beverages and more. OK, guys, we're still learning and getting used to the technology. Uh, I did not realize, I did not think about, I know that there's a 30 second delay ish uh, with these live events, but <laughs> I wasn't thinking about the fact that you're 30 seconds behind me before I've dismissed some of these trivia. So I guess the trivia is just not working from a technical place and that's okay. Um, but I, I hope that you guys are still getting it. Now, I love this cafeteria. This is one of the most comfortable cafeterias I've ever been to. They have incredible food. If you've ever been on a college campus before, some of you may, Remember, if you went to Wright last year, where did we go? We went to Western. We went to Western Kentucky University last year. Um, very similar uh, cafeteria uh, experience. There's pizza, there's burgers, there's, you know, chicken, all kinds of stuff. But there's also the healthier uh, things. There's uh, international foods as well as international bars, a salad bar. Uh, there's a lot of times vegetarian and vegan options. Um, and Tennessee State University actually has really great food. Um, and there's people right there going through the line, probably for, looks like the healthy option. Okay, 
let's go ahead and, and check out the game room. That's right, I said game room. Home to intramural sports and recreation, students enjoy leisure time and take a small break from academics to enjoy the student life experience. Yeah, short and sweet, uh, but man, look at all these uh, pool tables or billiard tables. Um, it was never really my thing when I was in college. Um, you know, I like to be in the spaces where people were playing those uh, types of games, but uh, me and my friends kind of got good at ping pong and I'm not really very good at it anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, ping pong is usually very popular. Um, all right, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the Gentry Center. Uh, as I said earlier, a lot of times students think of sports when they think of colleges. Uh, so let's go check out the Gentry Center Complex. Gentry Center Complex is a primary athletic and recreational center for the campus. This is where the men's and women's basketball teams play home games. This is also where our graduation ceremonies in May and December are held. The Wilma Rudolph indoor track encircles the gym. On the first floor is a 35 meter swimming pool and on the second floor are the dance studios, PE classrooms and racquetball courts. There is also a weight room on the gym floor used by the athletes. The wellness center provides exercise and weightlifting equipment as well as studio exercise facilities for all students. All right, yeah, I love the TSU gym. Um, as she mentioned, there's a track up here right around where my mouse is going through, uh, an indoor track, so you can always uh, run, rain, or shine, okay? Um, so I think that's actually the last step of the tour. Here's the outside of the Gentry Complex. You go in through these doors right here and you basically walk right into the stadium. I think this first building was where we started. Um, so, yes, it is. As so what we're gonna do real quick, um, I want you all, first off, we're not quite ready to dismiss, but remember I put that link up there in the chat that I need you guys to fill out before you leave today. Um, so just scroll up and find that link and that'll make me extremely, extremely happy. Uh, next thing I want to do, we've got only a few minutes left. Uh, I want to take you over to the Tennessee State University website so that you, so I can show you basically kind of tour the website a little bit with you so that you see what it looks like and how to find the information that you need. So I'm just going to Google Tennessee State University. And my web page loads up. And I see it's right here, www.tnstate.edu. Always look for the .edu uh, when you're uh, looking for college websites. If it's anything else, it's not the right place. Colleges will always have a website that's something.edu. Okay, so here we are on the splash page of Tennessee State University. We've got an update on the COVID-19 pandemic and how they're responding. Um, it says your path to the BSN nation. Uh, they are this, they're promoting their Bachelor of Science in Nursing program, uh, which honestly nursing is usually pretty popular at any school that has it. Um, and I know that TSU's nursing program can be pretty competitive. Uh, so if you want to be a nurse, remember math, strong math skills, strong science skills, strong interpersonal skills. Uh, you know, being able to talk with people, it's really important. Uh, yeah, we're just kind of clicking through. This is what it looks like. We, if you want to know about the current news, you can check it out there. I'm sure that this video says TSU Strong is probably a, um, you know, pep video about uh, fighting COVID-19. Um, but yeah, let's say that you want to learn about how much it costs to go to finance, to go to TSU and what financial aid is available. We click cost and aid. And this is the tuition. Remember, that's a fancy word for the price of education. Uh, it also covers fees and other charges. Uh, remember, college is expensive. So if you want to go through and see exactly what all the fees are, you can click through these links. Um, and they even have the, fee, the, the deadlines to pay the fees here. Um, one thing I'm going to point out really quickly, this is something that you need to know. When you guys, before, when you graduate high school and you're going into college, your, your 
going into college as an undergraduate. That may be a term you've never heard before, but it's an important term to know. Um, basically, if you're in college uh, pursuing a degree uh, that's a bachelor's degree, which is four years or less, then you're an undergraduate. If you are uh, pursuing a master's, a PhD, um, you know, maybe even like a, a medical degree, something like that, then you could refer to yourself as a graduate student. OK, so when you're looking for information, always look for undergraduate. OK, so anyway, that's where you can find information about the tuition and fees and in interest of time. I'm just going to let you guys uh, explore that on your own. Uh, let's go back to the home page. Uh, this is where you would click apply to learn exactly what you need to do to get in. So you would be going in as freshman. And it says starting TSU as an entering freshman. They have two choices here. So you would be freshman under 21 years old. So we'll click right there. And it says here's the admission requirements for this is for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're from Tennessee or from another state. You need at least a 2.5 cumulative weighted GPA and at least a 19 on the ACT or a 900 on the SAT. If you want to get guaranteed admission, you need to have at least a 3.2 weighted GPA. Now, hopefully most of you uh, were part of Miss Baker's conversation on Tuesday. She talked a lot about GPA. She talked a lot about credits. Um, and uh, if you if you were part of it, then you know uh, a little bit about what this this 2.5 GPA is. Um, if you weren't, I'm going to just quickly say a little bit about GPA. GPA uh, awards points to a student's final grade in a class. OK, if you got an A, then you're going to get four points. If you got a B in that class, you're going to get three. If you if you got a C, you would get two. If you got a D, you'd get one. And if you got an F, you'd get zero points and you'd have to probably take the class again. Um, so the more classes you take, the more your points add up, right? So if you ever want to know your GPA, you got to find your points and then add all those up and then divide by the number of classes that you took. So if you only got A's, You'd add up all those and then you divide by the number of classes you took and you would still have a 4.0 because we know that a a is worth four points right so if you got all b's then you'd probably have about a 3.0 so somewhere between like b minus and b is where you want to be uh you know for for tsu um you know that's that's not super selective uh but that's actually pretty common for a public university uh, to be right around in there. MTSU is higher, and I think that's because they're a much bigger school and they have a lot more applicants. But I just want you guys to be aware of this GPA thing. Um, and the other thing I'm going to mention is the ACT. Remember in Tennessee, the ACT is required for graduation. Uh, and um, basically the ACT test is a assessment of your college readiness. So the higher your score, uh, you know, the more likely it is that you'll be successful in college or so it is believed. OK, we'll see what happens with the ACT by the time you guys are seniors, but you guys can take the ACT this year if you wanted to. And through over the years, you're going to have many opportunities to prepare for the ACT. You're going to uh, there's an ACT prep class here at Glencliff you could take. Um, Gear Up is going to come up with some opportunities for you to study for the ACT regularly and to take practice tests and honestly the more you practice taking the ACT the more likely it is that you'll get the score that you want but it it really it, it takes practice like playing basketball right like you want to get good at basketball you gotta go outside in a driveway and shoot baskets like in your free time so in your free time you have to practice for the ACT that's kind of the catch but the reward of it is potential financial aid like scholarship money you don't have to pay back right uh, or getting into that really really selective college that only admits a small percentage of students that um, that get accepted so anyway well, as you are looking at colleges the three things i pointed out here are where to find tuition fees 
where to find financial aid, which we really didn't talk about that too much. I'm sorry, but we've run out of time and uh, where to find the admission requirements. And a lot of times there's a hard GPA and a hard ACT requirement like TSU. Uh, some schools don't have a hard uh, GPA or ACT. Sometimes all they post is an average. Uh, so like the average admitted student would get a 3.0 or something. So you would know that you probably if you're in that area, then you might have a shot of getting in. So anyway, I hope that this was rewarding for you. Don't forget to do my survey. And again, I want to know if uh, you would ever do this again to, to tour another uh, to tour another college. So um, thank you again, everybody. Uh, for coming. Uh, I've enjoyed myself. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Don't forget that tomorrow during PLT, uh, you're going to have a chance to look at uvisit.com yourself or go over to bigfuture.org. Um, if you do either of those, please let me know uh, how it went for you and what you learned. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stick, I'm, I'm going to officially end here, but I'm going to wait about 30 seconds just to see if there's any uh, chat things that come in uh, on anything I've said so far. Otherwise, hope everyone has a great Thursday and Friday and weekend. Okay. Thanks, everybody.